Hi everyone, I'm Heather Paduska, star maker to entrepreneurs who want to find their authentic voice so they can command any stage. Welcome to Thrive, the show where I bring you tips, resources, and people to help you create a more abundant life and business. You are in for high value content coming to you from industry leaders who are growing their business, making an impact, and rocking their brands. My special guest today is Lisa Gottlieb. Lisa Gottlieb is known as the e-commerce queen of Denmark, and she's also the creator of Power Ecom Formula. As a marketing expert, entrepreneur, best-selling author, speaker, and coach, Lisa shares her proven strategies with self-motivated, disciplined, hardworking people to help them attain a holistic lifestyle that includes personal and financial independence. Lisa's 43 books, over 300 articles, business coaching, and health and diet products stem from her true life story. After successful sales careers at Oracle and Deloitte Touche, she developed a thyroid disease, which inspired her to write a self-help book on the topic to help others facing health challenges. Her latest works include PowerEcomFormula.com, AwesomePaleoDiet.com, and you can find her at LisaGottlieb.com. Welcome, Lisa. It's so great to have you here. Thank you very much, Heather. You are so accomplished. My goodness, 43 books. <laughs> yeah. Wow. How do you find the time to do that with all of the marketing and coaching and, and diet and health improvements that you've been making? Yeah, I think uh, I have a great team. So I have a very good team that I have been working with for quite a long time and they are very skilled and uh, they're very good at what they're doing. So when I come up with the ideas, they help me to process them. Oh, that's really important. Yeah. And is that something that you talk to other entrepreneurs about when they're building their businesses, the importance yeah. of team? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes. And what do you tell them about team? Like what yeah. kinds of things do they have to have in place around that? Uh, I think it's very uh, important for the, the business owner that uh, they are um, engaging with the, um, with the team and they, if, if the, the team feel valued and that they have a responsibility mm -hmm. and they are uh, really, uh, really um, perceived as um, a competent resource. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, really important for every human being to be valued and respected. And I think that is the most important for the leader to create a good team. Yeah, absolutely. And the team has to support the leader so they can do the good work to get their genius out there to really be the leader that can then lead the team. So it really yeah. is this collaboration. Yeah. Yeah. So you're a marketing expert. Tell me what kinds of clients that you work with and the kind of work that you do with them. I, I work with two types of clients. Mm -hmm. I would say in general, my clients are typical entrepreneurs or small businesses. But uh, some of them are new um, business owners that start up an online business and really cannot make the money. They heard all about that this is how you make money online and they set up something, they invest in building a, bi uh, a business or setting up a store, but they cannot produce any profit. So I help them to, to leverage the investment they already have done mm. in that business and make it to something that can produce a, success, uh, a, uh, a profit so that they actually can make a living out of it. And, and the, the other kind of customers I have are, are existing physical businesses that doesn't have a really good presence online. So I help them to benefit from the online um, technology we have that can actually give them leads and make sales for them in a way that they're not used to do. Mm. So let's talk about the first group because you said these are people who've already invested in yes. the internet and yeah. of course entrepreneurs are told all the time get online, get online, get online and there are so many things you can do online. Yeah. There's social media and there's sales funnels and there's Facebook ads. So how do you help people navigate that barrage of information so that they know where to spend their time and energy? The first thing is that I try to teach them is focus. Mm -hmm. They need to focus, they, they need to find out what is their expertise, what kind of product will the, be the one that they will have their focus on. Mm -hmm. And when they, we have decided on that, then we will know what market we will be looking after. Mm -hmm. and, and then we uh, can, can find our ideal client and this is actually what I do in this power ecom formula mm -hmm. because the power ecom formula have three components it, it is uh, to create the power product and to create that power shop that they can sell it from and to find the power market mm. that actually will buy this power product mm. so when these three components are in place then they can make a profitable business mm -hmm. so 
I do not tell them to spread them th themselves thin all over the internet and mm. do all kinds of social media and things. I actually tell them to do paid advertising. No, oh, okay. And for that, I use Facebook marketing because that is just amazing what they can do with this marketing tool. Yeah. So instead of just seeing as some kind of a, a, a social connection thing for their, them and their friends, then they can see it as the best marketing tool ever. Yeah, I think there's so. some misconceptions about Facebook that it's just for you know social parts, but also I've heard a lot of people saying, "Oh, nobody really buys from Facebook." You know, it's 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 kind of come and gone. Its time is over, but that's not true. No, that's no. definitely not true. And uh, that is, and um, Facebook makes a lot of money from this marketing machine that you can see that on the stock market. Yeah. So it's absolutely a very very powerful uh, business. And um, as an entrepreneur, you can benefit from that. Yeah. So. When I was in the beginning of business, we didn't have Facebook. Mm -hmm. So we have cold calling and mm -hmm. we have the yellow pages and so on. And that is over with Facebook. You can sit down, you can sit in front of your computer and say, I want this kind of client, I want this gender, I want this age, I want this income, I want this location, mm -hmm. I want them to love pets or whatever. You know, you can find all the interest and you can just dig, 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 and you can continue digging. And the more you dig, the cheaper your leads become. Mm. So the more knowledge you have about your group, uh -huh. the, the more cheap leads you will get. And of course, that uh, um, um, have a big influence on the outcome, on your profit. So I would highly recommend any business to use Facebook because there's two billion people in Facebook today. So I would be very surprised if their leads is not in that yeah, group. absolutely. I want to ask you a question about this because I know a lot of entrepreneurs who have spent a lot of money on Facebook ads and haven't had great results. Mm. So is it something that the average person, average entrepreneur should be doing themselves or do you think it's better to hire someone to do your ads for you? I think it's very wise to have a little knowledge about it because mm -hmm. you need to understand any task in your business is your responsibility by the end of the day. And if you want to outsource something, you also need to understand what you are outsourcing. Yes. So I think that some, a, a basic level you should, be, uh, you should be able to do yourself. But there are, as an entrepreneur, I think it's very important that you have some mentors, some coaches, somebody who can teach you the stuff you do not know how to do. Mm -hmm. And they can maybe also uh, advise you how to solve it. So you can remove some of all these daisy, daily transactional tasks from yourself and be the business owner that actually work on their business. Yes. So I will say a minimum of knowledge is wise, mm -hmm. but to do everything yourself is not what I will recommend. Yeah, and also you want to be spending time, like you said, doing your zone of genius. Yeah. Like my time is not best spent figuring no. out pixels. No. No. So, but I do need to know about Facebook ads. Yeah. So I, I totally agree with that. Yeah. Now, you said have the power um, product yeah. and the power audience, and in the middle is the power shop. What is yeah. the power shop? Say a little bit more about that. Yeah, that is actually where, when you send your leads to your website of some kind, mm -hmm. this is the shop. Oh, okay. So it's whether you sell, you have a big shop where you're selling actually physical products and a ton of things to, to choose between, or if it's just maybe a sales page where you just have one a simple offer, which I, I recommend very often. Um, so that will that is a shop. That is where they can press a button and say buy now, in in some kind of way. And if they don't buy now, there should be some other way that they can pick the information, mm -hmm. give them something, so they can at least collect that lead. Yes, yes. So that's the power marketing or the power product. Yeah. And around the power product, do you? Like a lot of entrepreneurs have many different products. They might have different coaching programs. They might have different online um, online programs and courses. And brick and mortar is going to have more than one product. Yeah. What are what are the indicators of what is your power product? Um, I will say that if you are uh, selling physical goods online, yeah. I will teach them how to do analysis and find out what products are the best selling products mm -hmm. online, mm -hmm. and we will copy from the best in the world, yeah. and I will teach them how to find them, yeah. and how to copy them, how to source it, and how to handle it. So that is a part of what I do with, with uh, how I succeed with the e-commerce clients. Mm -hmm. But if we talk about a client, uh, a customer with, um, who are selling uh, services, 
I will help them to bundle these into some more simple packages mm -hmm. so the customers doesn't get confused. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe if you want to take them in one direction and you give them a, an offer, you might have f a, 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 some variation of that offers in different price range. Mm -hmm. But still something like the same. Mm -hmm. If you can, if it, if I should go, give an example, it could be that if you learn, le want to learn Facebook advertising, I can sell you a packet for, for $5,000. And somebody will be uh, th uh, will move backwards and say that's too expensive. Mm -hmm. So I will give them another offer where I can teach them to f do Facebook ads for maybe two hundred dollar. Mm -hmm. So th that is what I mean. So then you position yourself as the Facebook advertising is, uh, expert, but uh, you have different programs. Right, and that's all about branding too. It's really positioning yourself and yeah. being known for one thing yeah one thing fu fundamentally and then yeah. you know i always talk about branding as having the trunk of the tree you have to get the tree in the roots and yeah. after you have the tree in the roots yeah. then you put the branches on and yeah. i think a lot of people get that shiny object syndrome where they're like i'm yeah. going to do this and i'm going to do this and then you confuse your audience yes and it's not as it doesn't yeah. flow like from what no. you're saying no then the profits don't flow. Yeah, I totally agree, 100%. Yeah, so you've worked in a lot of different places. Yes. And you, I think you told me you're in Dubai? Dubai? Yeah. Yeah, so what do you do there? What, who are your clients there? Yeah, I don't do it anymore. Oh, okay. But uh, I have, um, uh, have had investment company mm -hmm. where we created investment funds and we did some in Dubai. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice, and you do some work in the United States as well? Yes, I have clients here as well. And where, where do you work, in Boston or? Um... No, I, because I work online, so they can actually be from everywhere. Oh, okay. And when I do marketing, I do it all over the United States. That's right. So, but I know that, uh, uh, that um, uh, some places, um, United States is, um, more used to e-commerce and uh -huh. to buy things online than, than other English-speaking countries. So uh, it's a very uh, nice market for me to uh, work with because uh, I know that the clients there, they are very keen on e-commerce. Mm -hmm. So what about the brick and mortar? Because we talked about the online businesses yeah. using Facebook ads and having their shop. Yeah. And yeah. What about brick and mortar? What do they need to know about getting online? You know, especially, I think sometimes older generations too who maybe yeah. have not been online in the past and it's intimidating to make that leap. Yeah. What do you, what do you talk to them about? Um, I usually talk with them about, I, I look at their website before we have much conversation, just to understand where they are and mm -hmm. so on. But uh, often their website is maybe pretty old. Yeah. And uh, it's maybe more like a business card where they just have their information about con t telephone address and stuff like that. So um, I try to, um, to talk with them about what is important for them. Um, it's important if you are a local business that local businesses can find you. So it's very important to be in Google. Mm. So I will help them to be positioned on the first page of Google. Mm. So if you are a, a local, whatever, dentist, or if people write dentist and you are in uh, Dallas, then you want to be on page one. So is that the SEO? Is that, is yeah, that, or is yeah, that different it, from SEO? Uh, it's a little different because okay. it's also just about the data. The data Google has about your business needs to be absolutely correct. Ah. If there is some inconsistency within different of these, they call data aggregators, but then they hold the, the, the data that Google is asking, what data do you have, what do you have? They oh. have 52 or something like that. They look into like yellow pages and other. If there's inconsistency, then you drop. Then mm -hmm. they think that you are not trustable or reliable because yeah. Here it says you live in this address, and here it says this one. So then you have to be consistent in all these data, and people don't know about this, not at all. So and they don't know where to look. So it's very simple to do, but you need to know that it has to be done. So yeah, and I, as you're saying that, my mind is just going because <laughs> that's not. I don't want to spend my time doing that. No, I don't want. So that's why no. it's important to have somebody that does know yeah. how to do that. Yeah, and that's probably a big differentiator for people who stand out when they start to get that online traction. Yeah. And the most, what most people does, they, they are not on page one because there is the only place for 19 or 20 yeah. <laughs> URLs yeah. here on that page. So what they do is they buy Google Ads. Uh -huh. And then they come and say, we don't get anything out of our Google Ads. Ah. But that's the only way they can get on page one in Google. That's by paying. Uh -huh. So, and that is what we help them with. So just to be there in a, a you can say, a natural way. Yeah. And, uh, and spend their ad money in another place. Yeah. So I know that you do more than marketing as well. You have some other interests in health and happiness. So talk to us a little bit about how you really got interested in that. I know I read in the bumper that you had an issue with your thyroid. Yeah. 
I think that uh, I like to look at it in a more holistic perspective. Yeah. And uh, I think that the basic for all happiness, that is health. Yes. So I'm very interested uh, and concerned about the health because on top of that, we can build the wealth. We cannot do it the other way around. Yes. So I'm very, um, in, uh, uh, you know, it's, it takes a lot of my mind and uh, uh, I'm very occupied with the things that goes around eating well and exercising and sleeping mm -hmm. and your mental stage and all that kind of things. So that's why I wrote the book Happiness because this is some small things that everybody can do in their daily life mm -hmm. and actually be more happy. And if you're more happy, you send out better vibes and you get better vibes back and the world becomes a better place. So what are like one or two tips you can give us that, to improve our happiness? Smile. Well, there you go. Done. Check. Yeah. <laughs> it's so easy. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's also very easy. You, uh, another thing is think good thoughts about yourself. Mm -hmm. And if that is difficult, then, you know, there's always somebody that admires you. It can be your family, your friends or somebody, but they think that you are very special and you can do special things and they, they are not surprised when you come and tell them that I have done this or that. Yeah. You should sometimes try and switch and become that person and, and try to see how do they see you. Mm. And, and then suddenly you, you get this impression, okay, they will not be surprised because I could do this. Mm. And, and that confidence that other people have in you, that you can try to put into yourself. Yeah, sort of like borrowed benefits, right? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. And one of the things one of the things that I've learned to do is that I used to wake up and some, sometimes still do wake up kind of down like my first initial my eyes would open and I'd be like like just not like not happy right mm -hmm. when I woke up. And it took me a while to figure this out, but it's it's the action. Mm -hmm. And I read this recently where you play your the movie in your head of what you want your day to be like and then you pick the first action that you're going to take to make that vision come true. Okay. And that action, yeah. even thinking about that action, yeah. is really empowering yeah. and it, it sends like that little burst of excitement. So I think it's, yeah. I agree with what you're saying that it's, they are things that you do yeah. to, to work on being happy. Yeah. It doesn't just happen. Like no. some people, some people, you know, have different happiness set points. Yeah. But it's something that we have to cultivate. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. And, and, and of course, the environment is super important. If you are with people that actually depresses you, maybe you're not aware of it, but if they always talk badly about others or have a, you know, I'm nervous about the future and so on, it influences you. Yeah. So it's, it's very important to, to be surrounded with people who give you some, you can say, good vibes and have a positive mindset. And, uh, and, and if they don't have, you can maybe influence them and try to uh, spread out some good. But if you feel you keep on going, uh, getting back and negative feedback, then ch you have to move. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you and I were just at this Harvard event where there were, you were speaking on stage at Harvard and there were leaders from really from all over the world. You came from yeah. Denmark to Boston and yeah. there were people from Mexico and Singapore. And, and the room was filled with people who yeah. were successful who were positive yeah. and I left that event yeah. like high as a kite because I felt yeah. so inspired and so yeah. motivated in the yeah. good energy yeah. and I think that's something um, well I wanted your opinion on it but I think a lot of entrepreneurs feel isolated yeah because they're working at home in front of their computer yeah and they're, they're not surrounded by other people yeah I agree. Uh, to be an entrepreneur is a lonely ride uh, uh, much of the time. So it's very important to have a very good network, to have mentors, have partners, have coaches, have people who inspires you mm -hmm. and uh, who maybe are a little ahead of you so you have something you can look up to. Right. So uh, for me, I always look at people who are ahead of me and see if I can model them and get inspiration from them. And I like to be around them and learn from them and network with them. It gives me a lot of fuel. Yeah. Well, what did they say? Yeah. Your net worth is as good as your network. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think that's true for your happiness, too. Yeah. And what's the point? I mean, what's the point of doing all those things if you're not happy? Yeah. So I, I think that they go hand in hand. Yeah. Yeah. So what is your next big project? I know that you've got a new thing on the horizon. Yeah, I have a, this is actually a little serious. So the first book was about health uh -huh. and this one here is about happiness. Yes. And the next one is about financial. So the, the next book is about um, 
how to pick the low-hanging fruit, or how to um, in, to increase profit in business. Nice. So it's actually not for a totally startup, but it's the idea about if you have some uh, a business, then how can you uh, leverage that one? Yeah, yeah, and I love that it's about low-hanging fruit too, because I think sometimes entrepreneurs are racking their brains, like, mm. what's the next big thing that I can do? Yeah. And there's profit sitting right in front of them that they're yeah. not taking advantage of. Yeah. And you must remember, we are entrepreneurs, so we love to run for the new things all the time. Yep. And that is, you know, that's our problem, that we have to be everywhere and try so many things. So that's what we have to work with all of us entrepreneurs, to be focused and actually take that low-hanging fruit. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. that's really exciting. So you yeah. have a new book coming out soon. Yeah. You've written, was it, did I say 43 books? Yeah. 43 books, yeah. a book on happiness and an accomplished speaker. And I'm, I'm so grateful that you're here today because Thank you're you. here from Denmark and I just was able to snag you <laughs> right before you okay. went back and yeah. to share with our audience all your insight. And yeah. thank you so much for helping the entrepreneurial community to understand really how to make more money because there are a lot of entrepreneurs out there that are they're giving it their best shot yeah. and they're not yeah so we need people like you so thank you so much for that and thank, thank you, you for being here today and one last question yeah what does it mean to you to thrive it means to shine and be happy what you're doing mm. and uh, live a life that you really value and appreciate yeah so actually where you are the best yes I love it yeah, yeah to live your best life yeah yeah i love that and that's what you do and you, you're a great example for everybody so thank you so much for being here i really appreciate it thank you so much heather yeah. it has been a pleasure to be here thank you thank you and thank you to all of you as well and as always until next time here's to hitting all your high notes everybody take care bye-bye